I'm Dave. I'm Dave Wynn. I'm from Cardiff in Wales, um, and I've got some uh, slides to show you about Scotland and Wales, um, and also at the same time talk about my journey because I'm actually very new to stereoscopic photography. So uh, I'm just going to try and share the screen, and hopefully you guys can all see this. Uh, he says, wrangling a computer. Oh, the host has disabled participant screen sharing. <laughs> so I'm unable to share. Oh, my sorry, that's my fault. I will, I will <laughs> no problem. Should work now. Great. Okay, let's give it another go. Okay. Now. I'm just going to go to the very first slide and launch the PowerPoint. Hopefully everyone can see this. Are we good? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. OK. Right. So, well, yeah. Um, first of all, hi, everyone. Quick introduction. As I said, my name is Dave Wynn and I live in Cardiff in South Wales. Um, I'm a trainer and a climate advocate for a nearby company, um, but all the fun stuff happens outside of work, particularly, you know, stereoscopic stuff. Um, before I start, I'd just quickly like to thank um, the virtual stereoscopic community for inviting me along today, and particularly to Mary, uh, who felt my stereos for, um, from around Wales and Scotland were worth sharing. So, um, yeah, thanks, Mary. I'm, I'm very flattered and honoured uh, to have been invited. So thanks very much. Um, so there's me and my dog, Punky. You'll uh, see a bit more of us as we go through. Um, first of all, it's worth mentioning um, that um, while I'm very new to the kind of stereoscopic photography scene, um, I've been an advocate of 3D all of my life, um, ever since I saw comics drawn in that red and green anaglyph in comics like The Eagle um, back in my youth. And um, also, um, I had a very frightening experience as a child watching Jaws 3 in 3D, which was uh, a rubbish film, but the 3D was fantastic. Uh, so I hope you guys are able to, to free view these pictures. I've, I've hopefully scaled them so you'll be able to see them on a, a laptop or a PC screen. Um, I also enjoy uh, very much uh, 3D gaming via, via my Oculus VR headset. So I'm not unfamiliar with 3D. However, um, I didn't really know anything about stereoscopic photography or the history or even how, how easy it was. And perhaps like some of you here, uh, what set me off on my journey of stereoscopic photography was Queen. <laughs> Uh, in particular, Brian May and his book, Queen in 3D, uh, which I only discovered in October 2021, when my friend uh, Wayne, a fellow Queen fan, pointed it out to me. Um, I love that book, uh, particularly Brian's explanations regarding how to take 3D pics with a single lens camera, which is what set me off on my journey. Um, so anyway, I've been invited along to discuss my journey so far, particularly with regards to my favourite stereo landscapes. And as I discuss my experiences, um, maybe you'll relate. I realize that everyone here is probably very, very experienced in, in stereo photography. Um, but I'm hoping that maybe it'll allow you to think back on your own discoveries as you um, explore the medium. So I'm going to start off with one of my early um, stereoscopic pictures. Here we go. This is uh, a misty morning in Tremorfa Park in Cardiff. This is a park that um, actually uh, is at the back of my house. I'm very lucky to have this great big green space here. So I first started trying out single lens cha-chas in October 2021. Um, this is an early cha-cha, recently adjusted in Stereo Photo Maker. Uh, I recently discovered the uh, nice little framing thing in Stereo Photo Maker, and you can add text to it and stuff. So all, so all the photos you're going to see today are, are going to look in this format, basically. So. Here's another early one. It's again from Tremorfa Park in Cardiff. And if you look carefully, you can see a white light on the grassy bank on the left. Um, that was actually one of my um, dog Punky's collar lights. She was very kind enough to stand still while I took this picture. Um, you'll hear more about Punky later. So I experimented often with cha-chas, um, but soon, soon realized that there were limitations, um, particularly rivalries. Um, where if the wind was blowing, good outdoor shots became difficult. In this one, I was in a dense forest, which um, thankfully reduced the movement of leaves and branches. So I hope you can see that the uh, the rivalries are kept to a minimum. 
So this is uh, in Stackpole Forest in, in South Wales, which is a fantastic forest protected by the um, Natural Resources Wales. Here's another gnarly tree. This is actually in Scotland. This is up at the side of a mountain called the Cobbler. Um, I often took advantage of very still days to take cha-chas. And this is a really rare example in Scotland where remarkably um, there was almost no wind on the side of the mountain. Incredibly rare. So I was very lucky to get this nice shot of the gnarly tree. Um, while there's still some rivalries, of, you know, I hope you'll agree that they're not quite as obvious as perhaps if it had been a windier day. Sticking with the cobbler in uh, the west of Scotland, um, deeper in, the obviously the further into a forest you go, the less chance there is for wind to penetrate. And I got this great picture of a very kind of primordial looking uh, kind of forest. Um, it looks almost untouched, doesn't it? As if no one's kind of ever been there before. Although of course, if I'd panned the camera slightly five feet to the left, you'd have seen a, path, a pathway where everyone walks past it. But anyway, I love that mossy rock and the way it looks. Um, in terms of wide range single landscape shots, uh, this is probably the best one I've got via Cha Cha. Um, and it's the best in terms, again, of rivalries. Uh, it was the same day, it wasn't very windy. The clouds weren't moving too quickly, although it was a very overcast day, as you can see. Um, and if you look in the path, in the distance, you can even make out um, my canine companion, Punky, who I managed to ask to stay still, really still for a few seconds. So, rival, uh, so no rivalries caused by the dog either. Okay, so onwards, here's um, Loch Long, also in West Scotland. This is from uh, the cabin where my partner and I spent our honeymoon um, very recently. Um, and, uh, this is on, a, as you can see, it's on a very lovely clear day. Um, and it was one of those few clear days, clear days that we had in Scotland. And again, I wanted to take advantage of how those um, huge bay windows framed the scene on another still day. So again, as you can see, lack of rivalries, great. Now, I've mentioned rivalries a lot. Um, I, I realized that was one of the limitations of cha -chas, was action shots were almost completely out of the question. So at which point, I'd like to introduce, enter the Fuji W3. <laughs> uh, so here's the same scenery actually, lock along in Scotland on a cloudy day. And uh, it's actually outside of that framed window with, with my, uh, that's my long suffering wife there. While I started my um, stereo journey with single lens stereos, I really wanted to capture some movement in 3D. And after asking for advice in stereo Facebook groups, uh, I realized that my technical knowledge of cameras was such that I really just needed something that took quick snaps, you know, where you could get a good understanding of the settings very quickly. Um, the Fuji FineBix 3D W3 was recommended to me and I found a cheap one on eBay. So I seized the chance. Um, and from that point onwards, I've, uh, I've had great fun with it. So I wanted more movement in my shots and fewer and no rivalries. So the Fuji Fine Picks became my camera of choice. I do also have uh, the um, Eagle, um, but I'll talk about that later. So I realized that moving water came out well on bright days with the ISO set at 100 on the automatic setting. I, I basically just flip between the automatic and the P setting mostly um, and play around with the ISO occasionally when, when settings are a little bit darker, although I'm still working on getting my head around all that. Um, I did realize that the camera had some limitations though. I realized early on, uh, as no doubt everyone else here has realized, that as, as the lenses of the W W3 are roughly eye width, the baseline can't be moved um, and things in the distance flatten very quickly. The depth is lost. Um, now, what I found was, was that you can add people for more interest, uh, particularly in terms of composition, but if they were not close to the camera, as in this case, um, the placement and the depth of the composition becomes more difficult to decipher as well. So um, I'm going to take you very quickly away from um, Wales and Scotland just for the moment, just to kind of illustrate what I discovered in, with the W3. So I experimented with shots of people with interesting scenery or architecture in the background. So the baseline of the W3 does detract from the potential for depth here, but you know, with both the train and the architecture, uh, losing it the further back you go. However, I found that with the layers of people involved and the movement, it really accentuates the depth. So you get the sense of the, you know, the, the 3D back. Um, 
and I found this was very similar um, in this picture I took in, um, in Download Festival and Donington as well. I realized that you needed to, to get the most out of the W3, you needed to start with a subject in the foreground to help provide a sense of space immediately. And then various kind of objects um, staggered at different stages of, of the depth. Um, in this snap, um, I'm particularly pleased uh, because the sparkly green dress of the foreground is set against a sea of heavy metal uniform of mostly black, um, you know. So, uh, so once I'd realized this, I thought, right, okay, great. Now I've got an understanding of these, how you can layer and create this sense of, of depth. I thought, right, I want to get some more action in my, in my scenic shots. So I want a sense of movement as well as depth. Um, so I thought, right, we needed to add a special something. What's it going to be? Well, I tried things like pigeons. <laughs> you know, this is actually uh, on the Tap Embankment in Cardiff in, in South Wales. And um, while um, the pigeons are providing a lot of you know nice action and um, it's an interesting picture in terms of you know the, the 3D shows you clearly where the pigeons are in the sense of the 3D space. Um, it, it's a little bit too hectic to kind of capture any background, isn't it? You know, can it really detracts from what's going on there. So I realized very early, very early uh, um, I actually had the perfect being to include in my W3 snaps. Enter <laughs> my dog, Bunky. Um, so the movement of the dog and the movement of the water, um, I think, add up to something special, uh, particularly when the W3 is quite adept at catching things like individual drops and rivulets, you know, frozen in midair. Uh, the W3 is fantastic at just capturing that, that perfect moment where you can see things literally hang there forever. It's a um, lovely effect that I really enjoyed. So um, if you can add another dog and even more water, <laughs> great. Uh, this was at the beach in Barrafundal Bay in South Wales. However, what I realised, of course, with a picture like this is while the action shots like these are fun, um, I still wanted to get more scenery in the background. I still wanted um, the scenery to be perhaps a, a greater focus. So I realised that the problem with the baseline means, as I mentioned before, that the depth is lost. Um, further back. So uh, Punky became the perfect kind of focal point in the foreground to really help express the depth that fell deeper into the picture. Um, it also meant there are a few things to investigate in this picture uh, of this beach in West Wales. While not making it too busy, um, a single foreground focal point, um, the perspective of the beach dropping further into the picture, finishing with a nice but rather flat looking cliffs, you know, right at the back. Um, so there's still the pleasure of depth, despite the baseline of the W3 removing the sense of, sense of depth much further away, you know. So I experimented with Punky as a focal point in many kind of like pleasing scenic views. Uh, here's one of her uh, on the rocks in the Cove in West Wales. This is just outside the miniature city of uh, St David's and part of the, the Welsh coastal path. Um, we're very lucky in Wales to have a coastal path that stretches around the entire country. You can walk it almost uninterrupted from one from the south to the north, you know. Um, and again here, um, Punky as a focal point provides a, a frame of reference uh, to then explore the rest of the depth in the picture, you know, against the back, backdrop of rocky outcrops and the sea and the horizon you can just about make out there. So the next question I had was, well, how much of the foreground I should dedicate to Punky and her friends, um, given the object was to include the scenery. So in this stereo, uh, I took on the shores of Loch Lomond in Scotland. Um, and the idea here was, was that, okay, uh, you do have a rather flat looking background, but very pleasant. However, it's set off by the dogs in the corner in the foreground, which really kind of emphasized the stereo. Um, I did have a, bit of a question in terms of you know um they are a bit static the dogs uh and what do i want the focus to be more on do i want it to be more on the stereo and the dogs or do i want it to be on the the lake or do i want it to be on the the mountains in the background um here's another photo of the same kind of scene for comparison which which i like um but <laughs> again there's the question of well, where do you want the emphasis you know um 
these dogs look like they're having a great time and there's a lot of emphasis on the fun that they're having it's definitely a fun stay or particularly with that white dog i really caught him in you know a great moment um but is too much attention being taken away from the background is there too much action i guess it's a matter for uh, a matter of opinion but on the plus side you know i do have the lovely scottish scenery in there there in the background if you do want to look at it and the you know the, the great dogs in the foreground so sticking with the shores of Loch Lomond in Scotland, um, I also experimented with silhouette. Um, and they, you can see here, uh, the foreground is largely dark, um, but there are layers of kind of foreground stereo despite uh, the darkness, uh, the shore, the leaves and the silhouettes, all of which I feel serve to frame the, the moody mountainside uh, behind the loch itself. Again, flat, but we have the sense of depth provided by the, by the silhouettes. Sometimes um, you can make both the dog and the scenery uh, the whole point of the picture. This was taken in the Cardiff section of the Welsh coastal path. And here we can see Punky suspended mid-flight in the foreground, um, the bridge reaching backwards and several layers of depth provided by the greenie. Perhaps uh, the landscape isn't the most exciting, but it certainly um, adds the, the sense of depth as you look further and further back. And sometimes um, I think the scenery just serves as a plain background so we can shoot so we can fully enjoy what's happening in the foreground. <laughs> uh, and again, on the Cardiff section of the Wales Coastal Path, um, the shadowed vegetation here is in stark contrast to the brightness and energy of a happy doggo in the sun <laughs> and the spray and the droplets that she's left in her wake, you know. Um, but as with uh, all journeys, um, we have to come to the end. So we come to the end almost of uh, my presentation and the end of the romps over hill and the dales and uh, the beaches and, uh, of Wales and Scotland. Um, and unfortunately for Punky, she realises that she doesn't like some types of water. But, you know, still makes a good stereo. <laughs> Bless her. Uh, the, this is always the colour of the bath water when we chuck the dog in the bath. Um, yeah. Funky. So uh, I'm going to finish my presentation just with one final stereo, which is actually a video. And this is where Punky gets her revenge on me uh, for um, for bathing her. Um, this is where I was using the new um, uh, Kandao Ego 3D uh, just to try out the filming thing. Um, and unfortunately, Punky just objected to being filmed. I'll leave you with this. <laughs> Knocked a very expensive camera right out of my hand. <laughs> and that's that's me, guys. I hope that was uh, of interest. I hope you enjoyed that. It was lovely.